What if I say Russian didn't have any word for privacy? Would you believe it? Due to their history of their ancestor, the way they live affect the language they created. How? My name is Eris Chadu Mega. This video will discuss about privacy aspect inside Soviet communal life in the movie Dilda by Kantamir Balagov with critical discourse view. Back then in the early era of Slavic tribute, they lived in a communal way. Naturally, they need to stick up together to survive. If there's no Russian word for privacy, that means they didn't have any concept of it. Now we jump onto the Soviet era. We're speaking of mass nationalization of private assets, like company, property, including houses, that claimed by the state. In that era, one does not have anything and their life belongs to the Soviet. Everything that owned by the state is assumed as public facility, public space, in which everyone is free to use them. The government made communal housing called Komunalka and push everyone in one family to fit in one room with toilet and the kitchen outside that they have to share with their neighbors. A Russian film titled Dilda by Kantamir Balogov is one of several Russian movies that reveal communal life in the Soviet era. The film tells about two women who live in Soviet communal society seeking for hope after wartime. These two women named Ia and Masha. The time took place at Leningrad, 1945. Why there is a public space that more public than the public space? Based on the territory, this kind of public space is free to use and visit. There is the scene where Ia and Masha bath themselves together in Banya. They are surrounded by many people and the director emphasized the place very well, so we can clearly see that the privacy is considered to be not necessary. At the beginning of the scene, Masha seems awkward and not comfortable. You can see it from her expression. This shows the life that they live isn't the best, but they did it anyway. Besides of taking a bath together as a cultural activity, the government made it this way. Soviet Banya is actually a campaign for Soviet utopic dreams, to get universal equality by increasing hygiene and health among people. On the other hand, People like the idea so they did it. But what we see here is, Soviet people belong to the state, so they did it for the state's sake. Now we move on to the place that owned by the state, but people or a group live in and taking care of it. So they claim it as their territory. Kitchen is where everyone hanging around, and of course cooking. Every family has each space, their own cabinet and burner. Every communalka is different. It's basically a house that belongs to the bourgeois from Bolshevik era that has been claimed by Soviet. Lucky if they have a spacey kitchen with many sink or pantry that would feed for each family. But some often don't, so they have to share. They often suspicious with their neighbors. So they lock the cabinet and doesn't put anything like food or bathroom stuff outside. Or else, anyone would take it like no one has ever had. From these two scenes, we can see Soviet people actually understand the need for privacy, but the concept is not there. People keep complaining that someone using their stuff, even though no one using their stuff, Is there any private space in public space? A bedroom in Komunalka is supposed to be the most private space. Even sometimes people like to wash in their rooms. A bedroom is claimed by a family in which several people with special bond. But is it really private? Nope. We can see from the scene that took place in the bedroom, the room is actually used as a living room and dining room. Maybe more fit if we call it 
a room, just a room. This considers to be personal space, but still, you have to share with another person. In the first scene where Sasha and Masha burst into the room, there is Ia that sitting so depressed. But when the camera shoots Deuce duo, Ia showed up as a blurry silhouette. And when the camera shoot Ia, it's only her and her anger. This shows up that even though Sasha is the intruder between Ia and Masha, but Ia feels like she is the outsider and was left behind. <laughs> From the scene, we can hear voices from the neighbor next door. They having conversation, the sound of music playing. It is because the wall is so thin. But every communalka is different. But yes, some of them might not be so lucky. Neighbors might hear what you say, know who your guest, or who you talking to your phone. This scene ended up with Ia confessing that Sasha shouldn't be here anymore. Ia has a thing with Masha but doesn't want anyone to know. But how to keep something while you are surrounded by suspicious people? The analysis tells us that the privacy issue in the Soviet society leads to a condition crisis of privacy. A room that's supposed to be the only place to get personal space is filled by the whole family, so it means that one does not have any personal space. There is no privacy between them. Everything is a show. They are suspicious of one another. This is what the Soviet state expected to be. In order to repress the number of rebellions, they push people with the communal culture where they can watch each other so there will be no secret. Now, since Russia became an independent state, the world dying to know what happened behind the curtain of the Soviet era. Many literature and film reveal what is it like and what was the life in Soviet. All of them bring back the memories for the older generation, being some kind of nostalgia. But for people outside Soviet, they see horror and tragic story, and ended up with critics arise leads to the Soviet and communism. While in Russia, people didn't think that way. Balagov shows how people live in Soviet with scars that nobody knows the story behind, and no one pay attention to it. But everyone can see the form. How communal life is a culture that forms people to be more cautious, but also feel comfortable to live around the others. <laughs>